How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good. I'm so glad that we could finally find a, a time to talk. Are you in New York? Um, I'm actually, right now I'm in London. Uh, right when this all started, um, I got stranded in London. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that's where I've been working virtually for a little bit now, um, but hopefully headed back to New York not too long. Oh, I bet, I bet. Well, my gosh, uh, uh, pop dust. Wow. It's funny, the the way, you know, I, I wanted to set this up and everything is, um, obviously I, I usually work out at the gym in New York, um, but after all the gyms closed, whatever, then I found eight minute abs. <laughs> Everybody in my house has been, has been doing it. And so, you, you know, your voice saying, hey gang, has really been like a soundtrack of our quarantine. <laughs> Funny, that's why, you know, it's amazing. You know, it's been, gosh, since what, 1995? So you think how old that video is. Yeah. And it just rests day because I still think, you know, time is the biggest factor. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's 40 minutes in a day. I and mean, who doesn't have eight minutes? And, uh, you know, you'd be surprised. And, you know, it's just, if you think about just the abs themselves, you know, abs are still made in the uh, kitchen, not in the gym. But, uh, <laughs> but no, that's great. I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, there's more than one body parts, not just the abs. You know, we do a lot of eight minute workouts. And uh, so it's, uh, and you can string them together. But, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I think we checked out eight minute arms as well. And that was uh, quite yeah. the outfit you had it on. Fucking that thing. Uh, boy, I'll tell you, how cheesy was that? <laughs> So I have to ask, how did that come about? How did the original eight minute, uh, you well, know, sort of empire uh, uh, begin? It's interesting. Um, I was down in Florida. Yeah. Uh, actually, I, uh, I have a degree in uh, broadcast communications in mass communications. And uh, so I've been, uh, you know, doing some uh, spots on TV down in Florida. And one of the producers said, hey, you know, I know this guy in uh, Philadelphia who is going to do some videos and so forth. And we want to talk to you about this. And I thought, wow, this would be fantastic. Hence, we decided to come up with this, this strategy and call it 8-Minute Abs. And I did all the workouts. And, uh, but there was 8-Minute Abs, buns, thighs. Yeah. Uh, needless to say, it was just this, um, I think, this, this merging together of, uh, you know, everybody had their own expertise. Certainly mine was in fitness. Uh, but it's funny. The person who was the marketing guru behind 8-Minute Abs, mm -hmm. Brooke, was Carl Deichler is the guy who you probably know his company very well, Beachbody. Oh, huh. that's funny. But that's how it kind of started. And, and so the idea was um, I went back down to Florida and, and shot a few uh, segments. And then we, mm -hmm. cheesy as cheesy can be with the, with the music in the background was kind of cheesy. Oh, but it's fantastic. It's distinctive. It, it is. When we did that, though, it was interesting because everybody was doing 60-minute workouts. You know, you had Jane Fonda and... We said, you know, let's bring this down and pare it down to minutes because, you know, there's 1,440 minutes in a day. We're only asking for eight. So people should be able to do this. You know, if you go back to YouTube and you look at some of those old videos, you know, that's how we kind of, kind of brought it up to modern day because they had over 75 million views on those mm -hmm. eight minute apps. Like, my gosh, people were capitalizing on our stuff. And uh, so I said, you know what, I'm going to throw my hat back in the ring at yeah. 59 years. <laughs> and let's get on the road again and help baby boomers now. And uh, yeah. so, do you stand all the exercises in those eight minute videos? Obviously, that was you know some time ago. Do you stand by their effectiveness? I mean, do you think that the times have changed enough that you absolutely do? Yeah. Yes, I do stand by all those exercises because they they have the the test of time. They're tried and true, and uh, I still do those type of routines. Uh, but I'll tell you what, consistency beats intensity any day mm -hmm. of the week. And that's what we kind of showed people, consistent, and everybody's got eight minutes. But we want people to think about, you know, that idea of time and say, okay, you know, if you can do eight minutes, the light bulb goes off and says, okay, I can do double eights mm. to triple eights, where you do 16 minutes, four. And that was just sort of the niche to get them moving. Because, Brooke, listen, if you rest, you rust. So we don't <laughs> want people, you know, just being inactive. Move. We want them to move, and, and, and that's the, the essence of this. And, uh, and I still believe in it. That's so cool. And so then, you know, Obviously, you guys were, were sort of on the cutting edge in terms of that at-home fitness, et cetera. Um, but as that sort of changed and, um, you know, now we have Instagram fitness influencers. We have all that sort of online stuff. I mean, how do you feel about that uh, sort of wave in the fitness world? I have to tell you, it is the wave of the future and the hmm. future is now. I see. So live programming is absolutely going to be. Uh, the wave of the future as well. So you've got on demand because, you know, it's funny, um, you know, 
if it's on your phone, if it's on your uh, computer or iPad, you're more apt to do it right now because everybody lives with their phones in their hands these days. And uh, <laughs> sometimes they can't make it to the gym. This, this has really, I think, hurt gyms, this pandemic. Hmm. And it's made them realize they have to have a hybrid of brick and mortar and on-demand programming. And so you're seeing a lot of those companies, bigger companies, going in that direction. There's going to be an accountability factor in there, uh, sort of like what the Mirror is doing in Peloton, where there's, there's this interaction. And uh, so it's here to stay. And mm -hmm. I think we're still at the cutting edge of it. I don't tell you why. is because of my age now. I'm 59 yeah. now. <laughs> and the, the fact, I'll, I'll just let you see this. We just wrote a book with, I see you're a little too young. If you remember uh, Jack LaLanne, remember Jack LaLanne? Uh, yeah, his, I definitely know the name, yeah. Well, I just wrote a book with Elaine LaLanne, which is Jack's 94-year-old wife. Wow. And it's on a live, move, putting the boom back to boomers. And, you know, for us boomers, there's 80 million of us out there. You know, we all want to look younger. We want to live longer. We want to feel better. And so we're just saying, hey, people, get up and move, okay? Yeah. And uh, it's just eight minutes a day gets you on your way. And eight so minutes with that, a day. <laughs> that idea that uh, we want to get people to move. And, uh, you know, again, it's, it's I, I, I truly believe in what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people, even in that age group, in, I don't know how England is over there, but 66% um, of the population is overweight. Once they start moving, they feel better, you know, and that's the light bulb goes off. And so we're kind of the antithesis to P90X and deconditioned people, they really adhere to that and it resonates with them since they're not jumping uh, up and down and, and you know, jarring their joints. Yeah, I was gonna ask you, uh, you know, again on the, the topic of sort of current fitness trends, et cetera, like you mentioned P90X, um, like CrossFit, that sort of thing. What's your take on, on those sort of trends? Like, do you think that fitness is something that, that it, it makes sense for there to be trends or do you think it should be a more sort of stable lifelong journey? Oh, it's a, it's a great question. And I think you just hit it, the, the nail on the head. It's a lifelong journey. So it depends on your goals and objectives. Mm -hmm. And that's the main, the, the main thrust. Because I encourage anything that gets people moving. I think that's great. Even if it's a fad or if it's uh, maybe not as uh, structured. But sure. the bottom line is you need to get people up and moving. And I hope that idea of you rest, you rust is so mm -hmm. apparent. And, uh, and so, especially as we start to age in that aging process, because what happens is you start losing weight at your muscle tissue, and next thing you know, uh, the same amount of calories don't yield the same response in your body yet, and right. all of a sudden, people are going, oh my gosh, the lumps and bumps I didn't have before, I'm eating right. the same amount of calories, why are you losing muscle tissue? So, And so then, you know, obviously, this is such a specific moment in time for fitness, because like you said, gyms are closed. Um, so what's, what are your suggestions for how people can keep moving and, you know, continue to be active in this really specific, strange time? I've got to tell you, it's, we all have the same 24 hours. The fact is, you know, uh, good health isn't about chance. Good health, good health is about, um, about focus. And uh, it, it, to me, uh, it's about change. And the fact is, whatever your goal is, you have to look at every day and go, all right, you know what? Is the food I'm eating going to get me closer to my goal or further away? And if eight out of ten times you say, "Hey, I can, you know, I can live with this kind of kind of eating uh, for the rest of my life," that's great. If you're going on a diet, well, you know, diets fail because they're meant to fail. They cut out complete mm -hmm. food groups. Something that's that's straightforward. The 80-20 rule. And the same with fitness too. If you think you're going to, you know, go like gangbusters and lose ten pounds a week, it's not going to happen. And I always created programs, uh, Brooke, that are real. Mm -hmm. um, real programs for real people who have real jobs, real schedules, real families, but right. they still want results. And, and that's the thing. So anything that's going to get them moving, like I said, is, is great. And just, again, focus on safety first. That's number one. Focus on what you want out of this. And that's the other thing with motivation. What is your why? Why are you doing this? want to see your grandkids graduate from college. Is it because you want to go on vacation with your spouse? Is it because you want to uh, you know, uh, look better in a dress, whatever that why is, that's the most important thing. And that's why we try to get the, the impetus for change has to be in that, that motivation. Once you get that, then the rest is just putting the puzzles together and, uh, and, and to have that, that structure because, you know, change, if you want it, is there. I mean, there's no question you can do it and you can change today because, you know, you don't have to eat uh, that donut uh, right. and it is opposed to the chicken breast. You know, there's, there's things that you can do today. You can go for a walk today and it's right. as easy as that and i guess that's just sort of what it comes out and then all of that you know being said um 
I know there's there's often discussion there, at least I've heard among my my friends in my age group of uh, training for a sort of aesthetics versus functional training. Um, so, you know, people just exercising to look a certain way versus, you know, like actually strengthening their, their bodies and getting healthier. And, and sort of what's your perspective on that uh, spectrum, on that difference? When you're in that age range, well, you have a different outlook than my wife, who is sure. a little older. Uh, right. And so the fact is she's going for more, you know, aesthetics as, as far as, uh, you know, to me, when you start getting a certain age, you know, you want to focus on fitness uh, or being fit, healthy, and strong. Mm. And it just depends on, you know, where you're at in your life and your journey, okay, from, from being, uh, you know, again, sedentary to a lifestyle of, uh, of health. And, and, uh, and I have to tell you, I, I think you just feel so much better when you're uh, more active. Definitely. Well, fantastic. Well, this has been so great. I've certainly uh, learned a lot. Um, and I really, you know, appreciate you taking the time. Um, just, you know, one more thing before, uh, before we sign off. Um, I'm just curious how exactly, you know, you sort of started this journey. You said, you know, you were pretty young when that first eight minute abs uh, came out. Um, but, but, you know, what, what started it all for you? How, how has this lifelong journey uh, been kicked off? I have to tell you, I, and I've never been an overweight person. I've always been active. I played baseball in uh, college. Yeah. I played baseball in high school. Well, and uh, I was always the uh, calisthenics leader on the, uh, on the squad. When I went to college, I, I said, well, geez, is there any way I can balance these two? And so when I moved to Los Angeles in 1985, I started the fitness business then. Yeah. Because uh, I think you have to have you know, um, a leadership mentality. And I want to lead by example. And now I've got, you know, I'm certified through the American College of Sports Medicine as an exercise physiologist. So you've got not only the credibility from a, a schooling standpoint, but also um, I think uh, an image from a standpoint of it's an attainable look. I never wanted to be in the bodybuilding. I right. wanted to be focused really just, you know, tone and tightness because I felt that's what most people wanted. Right. And, uh, a Jack LaLanne standpoint when you know Jack connected with people there mm. was a connectivity and I, I hope that we've got the same um, you know elements to some of my programming that people yeah. connect what I'm talking about because it's realistic and um, and it's something where they don't have to disrupt their lives 360 degrees they can still have their cake and eat it too. No, it's just incredible. Your whole uh, journey and the, the amount of people you've you know reached with that one video alone not to mention all the rest of your work. Um, Brilliant. You know, congratulations on all of that. And, and thank you so much again for taking the time. Thanks, Brooke. I all appreciate right. it. Bye. Thank you so much. Nice Bye. to meet you.